from everything that I've seen, everything I've read about, and everything that I've studied, these three reasons are generally the main three for why people actually give up learning a language. So I'll mention them and then I'll describe what you can do to get around it and hopefully continue your journey. So number one is kind of paired with number two. You need to have a specific reason why you want to learn it because one of the reasons is it's hard to actually study a language. So if you don't have a real reason to, then you're going to pretty much give up as soon as it gets hard. Like you might be able to willpower through in the beginning or push through a little bit, but before you see some results and feel satisfied with it, the hardest part's the beginning. So it's likely that you would give up before then if you don't have a real reason why you want to study. I shouldn't say a real reason, but you don't have like clear reason or a clear goal in mind why you want to study the language. Do you want to live in the country where that language is spoken? Do you want to be able to travel around the country that uses that language? Something like that. It needs to be very clear and specific. Otherwise, you're just going to maybe learn the alphabet, maybe learn a few words, but then after that you're kind of lost because you don't really know what you want to do with it. So number two, we briefly mentioned it already, but learning a language is a pretty challenging thing to do. It takes a conscious effort to acquire vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation. You have to spend time to listen to other people speak, and then you have to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation where you're going to make mistakes while you speak. So this is the kind of thing that, in my experience from learning a language, you kind of just get used to making mistakes and getting corrected, but especially when you're not used to it, it can be quite nerve wracking. And there's two main reasons, by the way. There's an internal reason and an external reason. The internal reason would be, another word for it's intrinsic, pretty much means a reason why you want to study the language, what value it will really offer you. Do you have a deep interest in the culture or the language? And if you want to live there, then having the language is pretty much necessary. So if it feels necessary to you to live there and learning the language is a necessary part of living there, then you're going to continue on doing your best to learn the language. Then there's also an external reason for learning a language, which is also called extrinsic. So basically what that is, is an external reason for wanting to learn a language. So you needed to pass a test at school, or you needed to get a job. You're not particularly interested, you're not necessarily disinterested, but you're only doing it for a practical reason, not because you have a specific interest in the culture. So the intrinsic method is going to be way more powerful than the extrinsic method. You're going to have motivation and the feeling of necessity to continue studying either way, but if you have an intrinsic motivator, it's going to be a much stronger driving factor in continuing your studies. You're going to be able to push through when it feels hard and boring. It's also very important if you find a way to study that's not boring. Believe it or not, you can actually learn a lot simply from just watching TV in your target language. You need to be careful of some things like pronunciation and unnatural language. But aside from that, you can actually learn a very, very large amount of vocabulary in a very fun and efficient way of doing it. If you see a new vocabulary word, you can literally look it up in the dictionary and then you can make a flashcard with that word. So then every day when you're commuting on the train or something, or just when you have 10 free minutes on your phone, you can pull out Anki and you can just do the flashcard. And what it does is it'll bring exposure to the word over time. Basically, it'll show it to you right before the app thinks you're going to forget it. And then you have to actively think, oh, what is this word? What's it mean again? And then you remember it and then you move on and then the distance in between each time takes longer eventually you just always know what that word means that's all i have for this video everyone i'd like to thank you for watching i hope you found it useful have a nice day see you soon bye bye